is actually focused on local sustainable goods, biocultural diversity, and we retail by means of no plastic. So, next slide please. We started out in 2008 as a stall in Legaspi Market. Not a lot of people know this, but we used to be called Sakto because we really wanted to uh, retail things without plastic. I used to work for an NGO and that was yung, the trainings that I used to give to communities were about waste management. And after working for, I was in an NGO for more than five years, I realized that no matter how much I train them in waste management, it's always the plastic that's a problem. So no matter how much you segregate, if you don't reduce your waste, you still end up with a waste problem. Um, so I, when I quit my day job, I decided to experiment and see if retailing without plastic would work. So we had a booth in Legaspi Market. We would sell laundry soap without um, packaging. People would bring their own containers, dishwashing liquid, and, and all of those things. So uh, af um, after two years at Legaspi Market, that was in 2008, in 2010, we built a physical store in an old warehouse, a collective. So, a friend approached us and asked us if we wanted to take over a warehouse with all other small businesses and build a, a shop. So, okay, we did, and we were there also for several years. Uh, next slide, please. Last um, year, we started building out, and this year, we officially opened the shop um, in, also in an old building. So, it's also part of our desire to revitalize old spaces instead of being in malls and, and stuff. So right now, we, we got a space in an old building, tapos dumadami na rin yung new tenants. There's gonna be a bar in the bottom. So we want to um, take a bit of the power away from the malls and put it back in these old existing structures. Next, please. So we have an interest in biocultural diversity and underutilized crops. This is, if some of you recognize, this is Alagao, which in the Pampanga and Tagalog area, we used to make bobbies, and we use it to um, uh, to, roll, uh, to grill fish. So we try to use all these minor products in our own products. Also, our interest when we deal with communities is hindi lang isang crop or isang product yung nakukuha namin sa kanila, they also have minor crops that they earn from. So, vale, we want eventually, like, our dream is really for our financial model and our buying model to resemble Philippine biodiversity. So, in the Philippines, um, we have, like, so many kinds of species and so many kinds of um, artisanal procedures, but why is it when you go to the grocery, it's only cane sugar, you know, like, it doesn't reflect the biodiversity of our country. So that's, that's our vision, basically, that our shop and our way of doing business reflects Philippine biodiversity. And we also do business by supporting one producer or, or small business at a time. We actually, for a lot of our suppliers, kami yung main buyer nila. So, well, when when our demand increases, the suppliers increase, like yung mga kakilala niya or mga kakuop niya. But when we work with um, a few farmers at a time, initially, especially for experimental products, nakikita namin yung impact per family or per farmer. So, kunyari, our supplier of beeswax, dati tinatapon lang yung beeswax, now she's able to double her monthly income by selling us beeswax. So we see the impact and as our demand grows, they get to um, ask other people from their community to supplement. Next please. So we, some of you might be asking, why not plastic? For us, um, it's we're not saying that the other people who use plastic are bad. That would be most, if not all, business people. But for us, um, we actually choose not to use it because number one, it's non-renewable. It comes from petroleum, which has to be mined 
basically, dinadrill din yun, nagdadrill sila. So, yung mga meron may uh, position for, against mining would like, oh, like to pay attention sana to plastic because it's one of the most energy intensive um, industries there. Plant-based plastic is still new, so we have yet to see that. So far for us, they don't biodegrade talaga. Parang sasabihin nila OXO biodegradable, pero in our tests, hindi talaga siya nagdo-breakdown. If ever, um, it breaks down into very small pieces, pero wala pa kaming evidence na nag biodegrade siya at hindi nagde-degrade lang. Meaning yung mga particles nag exist pa rin, pero sobrang liliit niya. So it's energy intensive. Minimina siya, tapos, um, or in extract, tapos pinaprocess siya very um, electrically intensive or energy intensive. Tapos yung transportation pa niya. All of those things are not paid for by the producers or by the plastic producers. They're not paid for by the, by the retailers. They're actually shouldered by the taxpayers because Pag tinapo na yung plastic, doon palang magkaka-extra cost siya to the whole public. So, externalized yung cost ng plastic. So, chemicals, uh, ayan, chemicals also leach into food and bath products. These have been proven by a lot of studies. Kahit dry yung pagkain, pag nilagay sa Tupperware at in-ingest ng tao, they still have traces of BPA or other chemicals in their body. This is important for customers na may mga endometriosis or may hormonal problems kasi plastic actually has hormone, parang ginagaya niya yung hormones ng tao. So, um, constant exposure to these kinds of chemicals actually might be the cause of a lot of our chronic illnesses or a factor at least. So, plastic, even if it's recyclable, every time you recycle mo siya, hindi ka tulad ng glass, kailangan mong magdagdag ng bagong material. So, non-renewable nga siya. Hindi siya one, one plastic bottle is to one plastic bottle. Magdadagdag ka pa rin ng petroleum-based. Um. Tapos, finally, pag nasa landfill na siya or pag nasa bahay na siya, pag sinunog siya, it releases dioxins, which is one of the most chemical cancer causing chemical. Even pag naiinit lang siya sa landfill, nag -e emit lang siya ng dioxins, which is walang amoy. So, hindi siya yung mabaho na naamoy natin pag may nagsisiga. Siya yung actually invisible siya at malayo ang naaabot niya. So, may factor nito sa mga chronic illnesses. So, for us, ang plastic, walang logical ending. Meaning, bakit natin ina-allow yung mga companies gumawa ng isang product na wala naman ending. Sino yung magsha-shoulder ng cost nitong mga resources na hindi naman nagbabiodegrade at pag sinunog mo, nakaka-cancer, di ba? Parang, bakit? Bakit pwede, sil bakit pwede nilang pagkakitaan ng ganitong klaseng industriya? So, that's why we don't use plastic. Um, next slide, please. So aside from the, these challenges in packaging, like we, I, I also wanted to take this opportunity, since a lot of you are producers, to, to talk about our challenges from a retailer's perspective. Para um, I can bring forward our experience in the field. Number one, like I mentioned, lack of sustainable packaging and shipping options. Everything is in plastic. Basically, as a retailer, nahihirapan kami to find products to stock. Kasi lahat sila nakapackage sa plastic. Tapos, ang mga nakaglass naman, hindi mo ma-ship na wala rin plastic. Kasi kailangan mo ng bubble wrap. Tapos, uh, I, I know you people from Manila, you, at least kami sa Manila, problema namin, lack of unique packaging. Kasi isa lang yung gumagawa ng bote sa Manila. So, lahat ng products namin, pare-pareho yung insura, basically. Unless mag-import ka. Tapos, meron rin lack of small-scale printers na gumagawa ng quality. Usually, pag maganda talaga yung label, kailangan sobrang dami. Na, minamention ko to para at least kung may mga negosyante sa inyo, pwede nyo makita na malaki yung magiging market ninyo amongst organic and natural food producers. Kasi, gap talaga to sa industry. Next, please. 
So in terms of producers, I want to share also with you from a retailer side, yung challenges namin in dealing with producers, like farmers or cooperatives. Um, usually, hindi naman, syempre, okay rin pag ma-capture ng farmers yung more value sa product. Pero minsan, napapansin kasi namin, hindi pa sila, hindi pa sila profitable or hindi pa maayos yung operations nila as farmers. Nag-jump na kagad sila sa value adding. So, minsan, um, hindi pa ayos yung basic agronomy nila. Gusto na nila gumawa ng mga value added products kagad. Isang example sa experience namin sa cacao in one community, just by um, improving agrono agronomy practices, na double yung income rin ng farming community. That's just in agronomy alone. So, ang sinasabi rin namin pag nagko-consult kami with government, before you give these communities very advanced machineries, dapat, first of all, naka-organize silang mabuti. Second, may management technology rin. And third, sana maximize rin yung agricultural scenario nila. Kasi marami kaming naaabutan ng mga donated equipment na hindi naman ginagamit ng community. Mga dryer na nakatiwangwang, mga roaster na nakatiwangwang. Kasi, Pag dinodonate ng government, hindi nila naman tinatanong sa buyers or hindi nila tinatanong sa experienced users yung specs ng machines. Like, uh, yesterday lang, may nagdonate sa isang community namin ng developer. Pero nung nakita namin yung specs, hindi talaga siya ang mahal-mahal tapos hindi siya magandang klaseng developer. So, May disconnect between yung mga dinodonate or binibigay ng government and yung required ng market. So, kailangan magtagpo yung, yung mga may donation at yung mga, mga buyers or mga gagamit ng equipment. Next, please. Um, ang isa rin namin um, challenge also for other food processors na gusto gumamit ng or organic products is Minsan, yung raw materials may basic lack of quality kasi yung mga very basic things like uh, drying, measurement, moisture, storage, inventory, I wish that, I hope that if there are people from the government here na mag-try talaga even basic measuring equipment like uh, weighing scales, beakers, pang measure ng volume for communities kasi Ang nangyayari madalas, a lot of food processors want to use organic products, pero ang nahahanap nila palagi is yung mga semi-processed or mga, yung mga, uh, kunyari, dried ginger with, with sugar, ganun. Pero naghahanap sila, dried ginger powder na mahusay talaga. Wala silang mahanap, palaging may quality issues. So, lalo na sa grains, problema namin talaga yung mga to. Problema namin sa grains, yung moisture, yung milling, palaging may broken beans. So, sana, um, we're also willing to work together with um, if, if ever there are government plus private sector that want to pursue improvements and immediate marketing, kahit na on a small scale for these. Kasi, widespread talaga yung mga subpar na machines sa Philippines. Next, please. Um, ang isa pa namin, one of our biggest problems that I wanted to talk about, yung, yung mortality ng suppliers namin. Hindi yung namamatay sila, pero nagda-drop out sila from business. Kasi, or nagkakamalaki silang utang to the retailer, which is us. Kasi, um, wala silang social security. So, kunyari, ma-accidente yung anak ng farmer. Tapos nag-advance kami sa kanya. Minsan, wala naman silang choice kung hindi gamitin yung money na binigay namin. And madalas ito nangyayari talaga. So, I really tell government when I consult with them na if you just give farmers basic social security, yung healthcare and education, then they can make decisions like business people. Hindi yung, alam mo yun, yung every time na kailangan niya ng pera, magagamit niya yung pera ng co-op, magagamit niya yung advance, or sasanglain niya yung motor niya na pang transport. Like, for me, this is a, one of the most important points talaga is, let's start with the basics, which is giving farmers um, basic social security. And bakit importante to sa retailers? Kasi, 
nagiging risky para sa retailers magdeal sa small farmers dahil sa mga conditions na to. We choose to deal with small farmers, but it's actually quite risky kung hindi mo mamitigate yung risk. Kasi ang dami talagang uh, undelivered or bad quality products, tapos you, you get stuck with a lot of them if you don't know what to do. Next, please. So, in summary, uh, as a way forward, um, in terms of packaging, producer and retailer, producers and retailers, I hope producers and retailers will take more responsibility for, of their products from inception to disposal. Like, isipin niyo yung mangyayari sa packaging na ginamit niyo after nagamitin ng, ng customer niyo. Kasi, in a way, responsibility niyo rin yan. So, if, I hope we can look for solutions together. And then, um, we are willing to do cooperation, research, and incentives for greener supply chain and packaging. Like, if there are universities, we've tried working with universities, pero hindi siya nagsucceed for greener packaging, shipping materials, uh, uh, packaging material made of starch. And then, lastly, um, if any of you other retailers or uh, farming communities want to form like a coalition for basic farmer social services. Kung kailangan niyo yung voice ng retailers, we are willing to organize in Manila retailers that can lobby or really propose basic farmer social security. Kasi ito talaga yung kailangan natin to, to have a healthy supply chain.